people are going to call tonight's meeting. It's a regularly scheduled select board meeting here in Berlin. And with us tonight is Joe Staub, Carla Nuizel, Tour Nelson. We also have Tom Badowski and Tim Davis Jr. here with us. And we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Any additions or changes to the agenda tour? Uh, no. Okay. <clears throat> Any public comment? Yes? Well, can I just ask, where is the agenda? Because I was looking on the website and I have a hard time finding it. Where do we find that? So normally it's right on our website and then it's posted throughout the community as well. I know, just, I just yeah. can't find it on the website. Tour, can you explain where it would uh, be? It exactly? should be under the, uh, I think it's boards and commissions. Okay. And there's a, boards and committees? Possibly? Yeah, there's a page for each board and then click each one you want and then there'll be another link for agendas. Okay, I'll look around on there. Thank you. But we do have copies up front. Oh, would you like a copy? Soon. I can get it for you now if you'd like a copy to sure. have. All right, you mind, but We also have like a distribution list. You can get your payment, put your oh. email on it, and you'll get every. Email? You'll get, mm -hmm. you'll oh, get, great. Yeah. You'll get everyone. That's everybody. probably why you ask for people's email when you sign That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But you'll get every every agenda from the town. So I just have two quick questions, if you sure. don't mind. Um, I was hoping maybe you could address these either now or in the future, um, at a future meeting. But I was, we were wondering what the status of the Payne Turnpike road closure is, mm -hmm. and or if there's information where we could find that. And then also, when can we expect to see the, the cleanup from the tree cutting on the website? Because I know we spoke about that at the last meeting, and I think Tim said he was going to post something. I understand it's only been a couple of weeks, but. Mm -hmm. Excellent questions. Mm -hmm. So in terms of Payne Turnpike, I might refer that to tour. There is, there's like a long list of things that have to happen before it can move forward. Okay. And I think tour can speak to that. Um, I do know, in terms of your other question, we do want to put it onto the website. I don't know that it is there yet. Okay. My recollection was, Tim, that you weren't doing any more roads this year, though, right? Is that why that didn't go on the... Are we talking about trimming? The cleanup. The cleanup. The cleanup, the cleanup discussion. No, but I know, but so the second part was the trimming, and I don't think anything's going on the website, because I think you said there weren't, you weren't doing any more roads. We're done now. Yeah, oh, but when you do, you will. Well, if that's what the board chooses. Yeah, to do. but I mean, this year are you doing more? No, we're not. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I thought at the last meeting that you said you were going to come back and clean up. Right, but no more roads are going to get cut, is what. Yeah, I'm yeah. just talking yeah, yeah. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as cleanup, I, it might happen in October. If not, it'll be one of the first jobs in the springtime. Mm -hmm. And I understand your question because I know when we were discussing that, mm -hmm. we were talking about maybe putting on the website mm -hmm. to know where you're at at each, you know, yeah. intervals so that folks know when you're going to be back at particular yeah, I was sites. Yeah, all to have to be determined whether mm -hmm. what we were going to do or how we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. So possibly October? Yes, that's what it sounds like at this time. Great. And that could change, you know, as well. It could Mr. become Chair. sooner. Huh. An update? You're... Oh, I thought you were getting updated. She is. Correct. I was just going to say the list of things that she's talking about. Okay. The requirements of the state is the process. Okay, thanks, state. Brad. To go for Payne Turnpike right. right. is like. Brad won't be there. Okay, and state and federal. Yeah. So for the, I'm assuming because of the funding. No, 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 oh, but wow. I mean, there's a, there's a, it's, it's a, I was surprised to see the length of the process. Because mm -hmm. it's a disaster. It Are you is, back to Payne Turnpike? Payne Turnpike. Um, so we actually, hopefully we'll have the signed contract this week with the engineer. And then things should start happening quickly after that. All right. Is that a is that a just for my information? Is that a town highway or is that a city like Vtrans maintains that road or no? No, it is a, a it road. is a town highway. Highway, yeah. Um, but it is a federal highway feeder road. So right. federal highway administration is actually providing the funding nice. through VTRANS. Right, to fix it. Uh, so which means we have to follow the VTRANS process, which is much different than the FEMA processes. Right. 
Yeah. But is there grant money too to help? I mean, I'm just curious because it's flood. It's I mean, it's emergency related or flood related damage. There's sinkholes effectively, right? Correct. The Federal Highway is paying for the repairs, All right. but they don't cut us a check. Yeah, right. We have to do the work, and then we have to request the reimbursement from the state VTRANS, who then requests it from right, FEMA. Right. It's not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dealing with the right. government. It's right. never an easy process. So. It's indirect funding, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's why we have to do everything in advance yeah, yeah. and do it right and correct and in order. And that has been a big impact. So yeah. everything we do has to get approved by the cool. state before we can do it. So the contract for the engineer has been approved by them nice. and it's back with the engineer. So hope, hopefully this week we'll yeah, have something on that. It's fair to say probably, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to like put anybody in the spot here, but likely that it's not going to be fixed before winter. Is that fair to say? No, no. Very no, fair no. to say. I'm just curious, how many years are we talking about? <laughs> if we're lucky, it'll be next year. Um, but I, that'd be very optimistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, potentially looking 2026. Mm -hmm. I would definitely venture to say 2026. Yeah. And just as Tour just said, if we, if everything were to come together in the best light, 2025, but things are not moving as fast as they once were. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I would say 2026 in all, in all honesty. Well, there's more, I mean, there's more emergency related repairs all the time, it seems, right? So that, that ties up dollars too, I would think. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to less traffic on our road. Yeah. I can tell you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're I mean, it's not just all about us. It is, so, but okay. like. Again, is there yeah. a place to find out updates about that on the website? I'm just trying to. It's not to posted. Bug you guys all the time. No, you're not I've, bugging us at all, and I don't believe it's oops. posted there yet. Although I. Think I would it's like a great to. Idea to have it there. Create a page for that. Um, however, our web person is leaving this week, so <laughs> don't look at me, Tor. Slow things down. <laughs> I'm trying to do a WordPress page at home, and I have no idea what I'm and, doing. And I, so. I'm not a computer guy, but I've seen it. When I think of it, it's almost like a like the uh, what is it, the Wall Street ticker, where the numbers are just <laughs> yeah. running, but like. I don't know if you could do like an update. Not that there would be any updates day to day, really. Yeah, would, yeah. But maybe over time, but there could be a place no, where, hey, um, you know, in six months we'll give you an update or something. Like now I want to do a uh, landing page. I guess is what we called them before, but I, if there's a page there, I can manipulate it. I've tried creating pages and I've had to go walk to the town clerk's office and ask them to fix it Num young. numerous times. <laughs> that might be why she's leaving too, I don't know. <laughs> She'll be mad. She can do it, she can do it in two seconds and do what I've did. Yeah. But. She's very skilled. Well, and so are you. It's a generational thing to her, you know, that's what I've come to realize. Yeah. I won't even try. I was I was coding web web pages in 1995 yeah. using the old right. HTML text using using the punch cards. notepad <laughs> just equivalent and these newfangled WYSIWYG things these word presses and Squarespace I can't figure them out <laughs> it, it may be worthwhile just to say the anticipation is the fall of 2026 no. mm -hmm. and then, and mm -hmm. so people at least, earlier, least, at least have an idea yeah, and it's not like it's a legally binding proclamation no. or anything. I mean, it's just this is what we're hoping yeah. for. Yeah. This is what, this is, you know, we put out a bid to the contractor or the whatever, the design engineer, you know, something, wherever you are in the process. That'd and if great. we had the ability, it would be sooner. It's just yeah, yeah. all of those things have to happen and in that order so that the funding and everything comes together. I think he was just meeting posting. You know, oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I mean, I've been over there. A friend of mine lives over that way, and I've ridden my bike. It's been a little while, but passed. But I mean, it looks like it's a major, I don't know, I don't remember how deep those sinkholes are, but they're deep. Mm -hmm. and, Very. And, yeah. and long and wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fisher Road took a long time. I know that. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's th true. Th this Thank is you. Fisher Road times two. Because oh, there's three. 
if I remember right, right? This big one and the two smaller ones or something. Yeah. Well, we don't want to have to do the Fisher Road route and do it two times. Okay. That's right. <laughs> do it well and do it right the first time. There's a nice big culvert in there now. Yeah. Yep. You could stand in that thing, I think, right? Yeah. It's big. And for, toward the funny you're going for is 98% grant funded, correct? For Fisher Road? I'm um, not paying turn pie? Yeah. Yeah, the funding's in place. <laughs> we, we have the grant funding. Yeah, we just can't, we don't actually get the funds until the work is done, yeah. and we have to follow the state process. We had to hire an engineer to hire an engineer. I mean, that but you, is how silly this process is. Yeah, what I'm like, saying is you, that's like 98%. It's, grant, the, grant. the funding is there, yes. Is it fully, I'm just, is it 100%? Well, there's a, there's a local match, but we've got that built into our yeah. budget this year. So, so the funding's there. So, so. The way they could have gone quicker, we could they could have like what could have went to the constituency and passed the bond vote for three million dollars. Right. right, they opted not to do. Yeah, that, yeah, no, right? I got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we could hire our own engineer in the future. Many people would say strings come with the money, but I suppose well, exactly, right. right? Yeah. And thank you for your questions yes, and thanks. for your patience and allowing us to explain. And while we're on the topic, any other public comment? I know you came in just a bit ago. Any public comment that you'd yeah. like to add? Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the Good Now Road right away permit culvert storm damage topic. So, um, as part of the car dealership uh, going in, uh, they were doing improvements to the intersection there at uh, Marvin and Goodnow Road. Uh, they went ahead and did the work before they had the permit in place. Um, hence why we had to do the um, post-construction permit back in June. Um, in the July flooding, um, that culvert there was damaged again. Uh, it was because their, cult, their uh, construction crew, when they put the culvert in, um, did not put in appropriate uh, stone lining to prevent the damage. Um, so we are feeling that the construction company is responsible for repairing that damage. Um, the construction company is disputing that. Um, that should not be responsible for it because of, due to it being flood damage. And not, they're claiming it was not because of their workmanship. Um, but basically, Tim's response is that, well, if it was properly done in the first place, that damage wouldn't have occurred. So, Tim, I'll let you jump in on that. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, like he pretty much got, I mean, it didn't what I feel. I mean, I don't know what their designs were or whatever, but. If it would, if it had been us and done it the way that we're supposed to do it, you I mean it would have been stone lined, and I don't believe that it had large enough stones on the corner. So the brook comes down, turns at a fairly good angle, and is good now wraps around, and then the culvert's over here. So it goes in here, and it whirlpooled around the end of their culvert. And it pulled all the material away from the end of the culvert, which sloughed it off. It wasn't, I feel, stone lined properly. It wouldn't have, you know I mean, if it was stone lined properly with the right size stone, it wouldn't, you know I mean, it wouldn't have happened. So I've had a few discussions with them. Like Tor said, they they, how they read the permit is that it's under workmanship and not So you're kind of at a standstill between well, I just, what you've explained I and how had you feel. I spoke with Tor about it, and like, I mean, I don't really possess the authority to demand them, but you guys do. <coughs> what we're looking at is I mean, for them to Article like a Section work. Six on the second page. It should be yeah, highlighted do, if it came do out. Do we? Is there money? Would we be able to get money to fix it from the flood? We weren't, we're in the no, county, right? No, it's not, I mean, it's, and that's it. Like, it's not even heavily damaged. It's a half a load of decent stone could fix it, but, like, we Well, this is $100,000. Yeah. 
That's for the full project. Oh, so not just this. Not specs. the damage, no. right? Oh, okay. No, okay. Then they. So, is, is the culvert the right size? I couldn't tell you that. You okay. Mean, I don't. I don't. Was know. the project done before the flood? Oh yeah. It was completed and signed off or whatever. Yeah, they were. I believe they were in there building by July. You mean? Well, their project. You mean he means the road? You mean just the, the, the road? Yeah, the road, the culvert. Yeah, it, yeah, that was all completed. You mean the work had been done? The road had been paved. Um, you mean, they were pretty much done when you guys did this. Did the permit back in June? Because they Little June. didn't get a permit. Mm -hmm. They reconfigured that intersection entirely. Well, we we and required them Marvin to do that. Road and, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, but like I don't know if they did a hydraulic study on that stream to say, I mean, there's a lot of things that could come into play there. I mean, if it was, like if it was us and I was going to have to repair, repair that or, or replace that, I would be required to have a hydraulic study done on it or at least find out if it's a perennial stream or, um, there's another word for it, but like a, a regular stream stream. Like they go back and they look at the drainage area from a quarter of a mile from wherever the cross point is to find out what the hydraulics are and whether it requires this size, that size, or, or even if it falls under our jurisdiction and then it's the town that determines the size. If mm -hmm. it doesn't meet up to the drainage of what turns it into a perennial. So that would be all in the design for the culvert size and the type of stone that you'd be used. Mm -hmm. Like if we were to do Have it. we seen it? You haven't seen the design? No, we never, well. Should we look at the design? I think Tom has the plan Did we look at the design? There. DRB did. Okay. I mean, it's been three years ago, I show my. Okay. Did, if we, did we get into the minutiae of that culvert? Mm -hmm. I would don't well, probably, probably, probably not. Probably not. And I, and I get that, but yep. uh, I'm just thinking, you know, with whatever people have done in preparation for for just rain, and then all of a sudden... Yeah, that it would... weathered last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that culvert never... We never had to do anything with that culvert besides clean the dirt out from both ends of it, but it never washed. Mm -hmm. Last year's? Yeah, this right. year due to the fact that they dug it all up and the whole intersection's fresh, redone gravel. You know what I mean? It's very so, good soil. So, ballpark what, what the cost is to fix it? Is it? I'd say it was under a thousand bucks, but they might get, you know what I mean? If they were to have to come back, I mean, they're gonna get charged to move in. Okay, well, I, if it, I mean, they should they should fix it, I think. If, if you had to buy the material, time and labor, and like to charge to move a piece of machinery in, I would say it was well under $2,000. Mm -hmm. But some contractors like to jack their prices up. So. I'm up for discussion from a board, but as Tour said, under number six of the permit, it clearly states the contractor is responsible for repairs, restoration, and maintenance of work for one year from the date of completion. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely an argument that a flood would not fall into that category. However, um, I think we should ask them to somehow show that they, either they have to show us that they it would have happened regardless. They built it the way it should have been built, or mm -hmm. they should fix it, right? Mm -hmm. I concur. Mm -hmm. I believe drafting a letter, if that's something that you could do to her, or contacting them directly, but in writing might be the best route at this point to determine uh, their stance and you know have an open discussion about it. Okay. Kind of <clears throat> what I think moving forward. Thank you, Tim. So 
the next item on the agenda is the right of way application for Addison Drive. So this is for uh, installation of uh, fiber across uh, Addison Drive to one of the uh, homes um, for consolidated communications. Uh, it's going to be bored under the road um, from the uh, existing pole. Um, Tim, have you had a chance to look at it? Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, they do it all along, all, all the time along. It's not really going to bother anything of ours. It looks like they're going to line bore it. It says in the permit that it's 30 to 36 inches deep, which is, you know, kind of way outside of what we're doing. I mean, there's not really any ditches on that road or there's no culverts in that road. I mean, I had uh, toured a uh, Craig look at it. Just text me there, asked him if he had anything to add about it. And he said it was all more or less the depth of the sewer line down there, because the the sewer line and the water line, I believe, run on the as the design. It'd be on the pole side of the road down through there. So. He couldn't remember off the top of his head on Thursday, but the sewer line's probably more than, more than enough, deep enough. But if it was ever an issue, and you're gonna oh, the fire, the fire cables they, over there. They're gonna have to dig up the sewer line because there's an issue, or something. That's the only problem is, is you're gonna run into it. We we battle it a little bit on the back roads because they bury it on the side of the roads and they kind of don't. Ask, they just do. Yeah. And I mean, they're required to loop it around the end of culverts. So when the culverts are replaced, that doesn't happen. I mean, there's a set of boxes over on Crosstown because when they went to replace the culvert, there was a fiber line laid right over the top of the culvert. Yes. I mean, we had the same problem on Addison when we just did that culvert there this summer for that large replacement on the end of it their lines weren't marked and they were laid pretty much right on top of the culvert. Hmm. And in terms Hopefully of a completion in, in terms of a completion date they're saying as soon as possible after the permits approved. Yeah, they're gonna start right off. Mm -hmm. And that is Montpelier water. So yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. So are they gonna be boring over or under the water? Looked like they said under here. Well, 30 to 36 inches. The water is going to be okay. six foot. And the sewer, I think, is roughly four to five. I couldn't remember exactly on that because there's a basin like just back up the road from there. They just, we just uncovered it this summer because they, when they clean lines down through there, he was thinking that it was four to five feet deep. So. They should be over it, but if they hit it, they are responsible for it. I think he'll, you I mean, they'll, they'll put a big safe ticket out. He'll, he'll mark it and they'll know then, but that was the only concerns that we had were, you I mean, the utilities, our utilities run down that side of the road and they're going to go right over the top of them, but, you know, I mean, they do it everywhere, so. Mm -hmm. so. So no concerns to come. Not to you. as far as the highway side of it, no. So if, if the circumstances happen where something we do have to repair, and that you that you work around them. Okay. Oh, you work around them. Mm -hmm. What if yep. we if we? As long as they're marked, you know. I mean, they do like if I mean, do it a bunch of times. It's they do an emergency dig safe ticket. Somebody will come out immediately, anytime, and I mean, if it can be isolated and shut off, they kind of give you a couple hours, but they'll do an emergency Dixie ticket, they'll come out, they give you a ballpark of where it is, and then as the operator gets close, they kind of got to start paying attention, and so you usually just dig past it, over it, around it, and then it just spans the ditch, and you just keep working past it, you got to work around them. You do it if we damage them, them, do we have to fix them? If they're dig safe, yeah, 
because you were notified and you know where it is. Yeah. But if it's, but also, you know, I mean, I've seen them dig safe and they're ten feet off. Yeah. You know I mean? Just curious. I mean, I, I would imagine they can be spliced and all that. It's not probably a big deal to fix a cable. Yeah, right? and was it you know just mean? expensive? <laughs> it is it expensive? Something like that is way less of an inconvenience versus, you know, digging so up a major one and shutting. You know, yeah. I was witness to some of it a long time ago in Northfield. They were lying born under the railroad tracks and caught AT&Ts and shut down pretty much from Wall Street to Burlington. Like, Wall Street, New York. Like, <laughs> there was people flying in on helicopters that day. <laughs> <laughs> They pretty much deadlined the whole northeast because their main line under the ground. But it, it happens. Things yeah, get things buried in different depths. Yeah. 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 Okay. So do I hear a motion on the right of way application for Addison Drive? Or is there more discussion that folks see? Make the motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you and thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right, and the next discussion is Chandler Road Farm Equipment and a Warning Sign. So the residents there at uh, 1671 Chandler Road. I uh, would like some type of uh, farm equipment uh, warning sign uh, placed for their farm equipment there on Chandler Road. Um, <clears throat> such a sign <laughs> is permitted. Um, But uh, I turned out a couple pages from the MUTCD Manual Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Uh, first on the top, the use of warning signs should be kept to a minimum as the unnecessary use of warning signs tends to breed disrespect for all signs. Uh, then on the next page is an example. It would, would be a pictorial sign of the uh, person on the tractor um, Let me see. And then I've got the uh, dimensions mm -hmm. it would have to be. So um, I reached out to Tim and the chief. Chief didn't really <coughs> have a say one or another. Tim, you're not. I you kind of agree with me, I think. Concerns <coughs> with this whole piece of property. Uh, they don't have. I mean, they raise some chickens. They don't have farm equipment. It's not an active farm. It's not like a dairy farm. They're not in and out. They have a small tractor, like it's very small, like 20 horse tractor. Like, mm -hmm. They're not traveling up and down the road. So I, I don't really see the use of the sign, nor for the similar of what he just said was is, I mean, it kind of, we can't just put signs up everywhere. It's just because it well, kind of, did they give a reason behind why they that. were seeking it? No, but this is also their driveway is on the crown of the hill. I'm assuming this is probably why they want some sort of tractor symbol. Um, they have fenced their entire driveway off, so they have no place for parking. Like uh, I don't know if it's the people that worked work for them or visit them, but they're constantly parked. This is a brow of a hill that is blind, 100% blind. They park in the road, they park half in the road. Um, their dumpster's on the edge of the road, so Casella's picks it up with a front loader, the truck is in the road, over the crown of the hill. So bad visibility there. They get deliveries of 18 wheelers, I don't so much agree with that. We've had trouble in the wintertime that they get stuck over the route of a hill, blind, can't be seen. Um, I mean, if, it, if it's indeed like a business like they say it is, 
I don't think the town would allow Shaw's to run their business off of curbside. Why would they be getting 18 wheeler if they don't have a business? What are they, what's grain, going to deliver? They have grain deliveries, I'm oh. assuming. So they must have a lot of chickens. Yeah. And they, like you said, they do not have farm equipment? They have a small tractor. So a small little, tractor. A little Komodo tractor mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. they've already seen in the dooryard. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it's a... They're running out of there with implements. And is there blind drive there. signs or anything like that? Is there anything? No, there never has been. No driveway's been there for... I, I can add a little to this conversation. Um, they have received the Department of Agriculture uh, farm status, and they mm, sought permits last year and received permits from the town of Berlin for several outbuildings. Um, and um, and I and I think this is where it all stemmed from. I, I received the call from the owners that they were going to. Uh, uh, resubmit a an a, a addendum amendment to that application to uh, go to some larger structures than than what was there. Um, I do expect a letter from the Department of Agriculture saying that they in turn are granted uh, agricultural st status, um, and uh, the 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 sense that that I got is exactly what Tim was saying is that there's, it's, it's a blind, um, uh, supposedly people speed down through there and um, that's where the request for this signage came from, from that conversation that I had with, with the facility owners. <clears throat> What's the speed limit on the road? 35. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think that tractor sign is going to do a damn thing. No. No. no, it would not serve <laughs> the purpose of slowing. The but like I, that's where I brought up the concern of like, if they're going to run a business out of there, I think, and I don't know what there is for an option, but I don't believe that they should be trying to operate out of the road. I mean, parking 18 wheelers on Blind Hill and such forth. Like, if she's going to run a business, then they should have some sort of yeah. Why did they fence in their driveway? I doesn't don't make know, any but sense they to should me. should not be. You know, I mean, I was grading the road one day, and they parked the car half in the road. And I had to ask them to move their vehicle, and then I kind of got some flack about it that that they didn't have adequate parking <coughs> there. And I was like, well, then you probably shouldn't be. I mean, the vehicle was half out in the road, so any traffic was being forced into oncoming traffic on on a blind hill. So you guys can. You know, if that wherever that goes, but if they're going to operate a business out of there, they should have some sort of area parking driveway to get any vehicle that services them off the road out of the road. Definitely. Yeah, to me, it sounds like the, the obstruction of the roadway is a bigger issue than right. the, uh, Much than bigger the signs. Issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a concern of mine for a little while because I I cringe. <laughs> Somebody's gonna. Should the speed limit be changed to 25? That's not gonna make a difference. We're uh, just looking. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, I mean, this summer, well, yeah, <clears throat> this summer has been worse because everybody's trying to play, beat the flagger with pike paving on Route 12. Yeah. I mean, they keep getting these pop ups here and there between, and so everybody's like, oh, Chandler Road's a cutoff. They whip onto the bridges and they fly down Chandler Road and then. They pass in yeah. some of the construction. So the traffic has been, I mean, I wouldn't say that it's a lot heavier, but it has its days. Yeah. I believe a discussion about the obstruction of the roadway um, definitely should occur in conjunction with what we're discussing tonight and why um, we're not, not inclined to go forward with the sign but to have the other discussion openly, being that we're aware of the concern and it's been discussed and uh, we certainly don't want to have anything negative occur or I mean, any I think, harm come to anyone as a result. Sorry, I think blind drive is more appropriate than the tractor because people would pay more attention to that, I think, than they would the tractor sign. Yeah. Um, if anything. But the, but the drive is not the issue. The issue is parking on the road. Right. No, so I get it, but I'm saying if, like if no they really want a sign. It's 
So it's the, um, I mean, that driveway sits right on the crown of the hill. So if you sit in the driveway, you have adequate sight distance both ways. That's usually what determines a hidden oh, drive okay. sign so, okay. is that if the driveway doesn't have adequate okay. vision, that's kind of where the hidden <coughs> drive sign comes from. Yeah, that makes from. sense. But they sit on the crown of the hill. They can see. It's just I've also <laughs> been called in the last week about them possibly filing for a second driveway permit. They don't own enough property to get over a crown of a hill and have enough sight distance for a second time. Mm -hmm. The road frontage is not there. Mm -hmm. So I heard that there was possibly a second driveway permit coming. Maybe not. I, they might have reached out to Tom by now, but. So. Second driveway or different location? Second, second driveway. driveway. Yeah, they're not going to do that. And I'm open to discussion from the board in terms of how you folks would like to proceed Any other well, additions you'd how like can to we, make to? What, what, what do we have to fall back on as far as obstructing the road? Next. I think what we may have, uh, Joe, is that if this amendment is truly coming to this permit, that uh, uh, we reach out to the Department of Ag and um, have them require them to keep all f farm out of the public right, all farm um, activities out of the public right of way. I think the Department of Ag has a, a bigger stick in this than, okay. than we do. That, that's, that's what I think, not what I know. Carla, you farm, I mean, right? I mean, I have no idea. Yeah. We don't have a real farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobby farm at this point. And we never had. Yeah. I, mean, I would think that. The Department of Ag would be sympathetic with this situation. And Tom, do you believe that that amendment is most likely coming soon? Yes. Rather soon? Yes. Okay. So maybe we should pen the discussion for awaiting the amendment. I think and if it comes in, Tor and I would have a discussion and draft something to mm -hmm. the Department of Ag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have to wait for that? that? We don't have to wait for that permit to have that discussion. But, well, Right? No, I guess not. But I mean, that, that's where we have some leverage only if they want to. Because their existing permit is going to expire here soon. Okay. And, and um, they want to come into us and amend this prior to that, ex at that expiration. So I, I do expect something soon. Oh, so they haven't built the buildings yet that they got the permit for? Oh, now no, I understand. No, no. Um, do we have anything, any kind of an ordinance about obstructing the road or anything we can enforce not that i'm aware of uh, it, there is an ordinance i don't know the number i mean you can't park in the pub, in a travel portion of the public highway true mm -hmm. is that a state thing mm -hmm. well yeah so same, that, it's the same it's the same I same issue we had with the Berlin pond yeah Right, and good when point. we did all of that, and then like the same as like parking in the winter time, you can't park in the yeah, because mm -hmm. people just pull up on the side of the road and park. Mm -hmm. So, do you think we should just wait until they to talk about it with the permit, or or you could ticket it? Please, hey, that's how we started Berlin Pond. We were started ticketing that's people right. who were parking there, right, mm -hmm. and have the. Yeah, I can't remember right now off the top of my head, but was was there a special ordinance made for the, the pond, or did we just make a, no. an ordinance altogether about parking? And I, I think we decided I think to enforce the ordinance. Yeah, That's maybe right. That might have been what it, it was. It was enforcement. Enforcement of, of the ordinance, yeah. Because yeah. I know we changed a bunch of signs. We lowered yeah. the speed limit. Yep. Mm -hmm. We put up all the no parking signs. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to work well, you know. Yeah. Overall. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But you did offer nice. them a place. <laughs> but you did offer them a place to park off of the right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's a public, not no, a I, I right, right. Private. Right. <clears throat> Seems as though somebody should say something to them, whether it's the police or whether they get a letter from the town, one or the other. 
Are you inclined to and, uh, the other tour? There's uh, our parking ordinance says uh, additional restriction. Uh, Restrictions apply as follows. In any area that the parking of a motor vehicle would interfere with the normal flow of traffic <coughs> or obstruct movement of other vehicles. So I think that right there would. <coughs> yeah. Right. So shall we draft a letter to them or would you prefer to have a phone conversation start there? I think let's direct a letter first and then follow up with tickets if needed. You don't know who their grain supplier is, do you? No, because they're all sorts of different. different. There's, um, uh, what's the company from down by Dubois, the yellow trucks, I can't think of the name of them. But there's the... Central? Yeah. Central Transport, and then there's been a couple of them that are just out of state trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's no not like pulling grain or. No, it's not pulling. They're okay. just getting regular, you know. 18 wheeler. Yeah, okay. they must order something and we just deliver like 18 wheeler. And then, like I said, their dumpster sits right on the side of the road, so one can sell is servicing there. And they have a, uh, a truck load. Power lines run over the road right there, so in order for them to dump the dumpster, they have to pick the dumpster up back out into the road so the, they're clear of the overhead lines, dump the dumpster, mm -hmm. drive back in, and set it on the side of the road. So, hmm. So, in essence, we could request a cease and desist, in essence, in terms of a letter that you would draft. That yeah, would put up nice, nicer, nicer yeah. than that. Yeah, start being yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds great to me. And Any you know, other comments maybe asking or addition? them to find some alternatives for their... They're going to have to move that dumpster. Yeah, mm -hmm. dumpster, the loading. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, like I said, they, they have a fairly large, large driveway, and the fence is you know, from here to that wall off the road. It's just about enough to get one vehicle off the road, maybe, maybe one and a half. And then there's a gate in the hall park right on the end of the road. So if anybody, more than two cars, maybe three, depending on the size of the vehicle, mm -hmm. show up there, they're parking in the road. Is it like a, so it's not just like a, a gate, it's a substantial gate, it's not just like a fence, like with a little wire fence? Oh no, it's a gate gate. Yeah. They have a woven wire sheet fence, at least along the road front end that I've seen to hmm. keep the birds, yep. the chickens. There's guinea hens. I'm surprised none of them have been run over yet. They're, there's guinea hens running in the road. They all stand right in the middle of the road. I'm surprised nobody's run them over. Was They come over the crown of the hill. And <laughs> last week there was a couple of turkeys running loose over there. Oh, so they have a lot of birds. Yeah. Thanksgiving. I heard somewhere <laughs> around 900 on a yard that's probably the size of this building. As I say, it's only 10 acre lot. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Somewhere. Smells like death. Huh. And, um, That's a lot of birds for 10 acres, it seems like. Anyway, then, well, yeah. it's a tremendous The dog's always in the road. There's always, they do, I see a lot on the Northfield pages because it's over there. But they have one of them guardian dogs, I guess. Oh, great. Oh, I love those. Yeah, and he's always <laughs> off wandering around in the neighborhood. <laughs> He doesn't have enough work to do. No, I guess I'm like checking out everybody else in here. Still. Meandering around. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tim. Okay, well, so let them know that they really should find alternatives to all that. And thank you, Tor. So we'll move on now to the ice rink financing and update. So I know Tor put in your packet um, a spreadsheet. I, this is a little tweak to it, not, not a significant dollar change, but it is a dollar change. So I just want to make sure the board's cognizant of that. I've got one. What's that? I got, I got oh, one. you got oh, one. You got probably got an extra one for Brad. You want to hand that back to Mr. Willard, please? So as you may know, the we called last November, uh, the town uh, voted a, a bond vote, $775,000 to repurpose the seasonal ice rink into a four-season recreational center. Um, so the 
the, the uh, Recreation Committee, which, which Tom Willard's here is part of that, uh, we have gone and went to RF uh, a request for qualifications for both civil and solar um, uh, suppliers, received uh, and awarded contracts to Du Bois and King for the civil piece and for Suncommon for the solar uh, uh, portion. You may recall what we want to do is, is put a canopy over, uh, uh, over the ice rink. Re Redevelop the ice rink, uh, uh, put a put a, um, a a better sub base, um, and then put a canopy over it, and the canopy would house um, solar collectors and generate uh, solar power. Um, and so the the uh, cost of it, if you look at the upper uh, left hand corner of what I just got given to you, there's three engineering sub base for the rink and the solar canopy. Collectively, 1.6 million dollars. Uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, solar grant um, that's awarded uh, th through the feds, um, but through the state of Vermont for $311,000. So, so we have a need of 1.3 uh, million dollars for for the project. This is a solar project. Um, the, it's going to generate electricity. And um, the annual revenues, the average for 25 years, you can see there's a little over $57,000 a year in the in the in the uh, in the revenue. So uh, I That's broke that. That's a year. Uh, Fifty thousand a year, correct? Yep. And annualized for the 25 years, if you look, Joe, on the right right hand side of that total revenues, 20 25 years, 1.4 million dollars there in the solar. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you can see the the net canopy cost of and the the uh, uh, the uh, rink sub base cost. Uh, so I've been meeting with the with the Vermont Bond Bank. They have some special financing now for solar projects at two point one two five percent. And you can see I have a debt service line item there for the canopy debt service. Uh, I use 3.25. Um, um, you can get the 2.125 on the solar panels, but you can't get it on the structures uh, that hold the panels up. So, on average, it's it's a 3.25 um, uh, interest rate. And you can see the sub base and rink debt service. That's at 3.75. Um, so uh, the um, uh, I've, I've spoken to Bond Council. Um, we have constituency approval of seven hundred seventy-five thousand um, dollars, and I, the the um, thought process when we went to the voters is that that this is going to generate revenue, and that revenue would pay for any additional financing. Um, he concurred that that the revenue uh, uh, would pay for financing. However, you you would still need constituent approval of the total value uh, of the borrowing. So, what the recreation uh, committee would like to discuss with the select board um, uh, to avoid going back out to the constituency, especially after a 10% tax increase. Um, is that using local options tax to bridge this seven hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and um, and uh, uh, for the for the cost of the project, keeping in mind that the total revenue, anticipated total re revenue for this for this for twenty-five years is one point four million dollars. If you take that into account, the, the the balance of monies that would have to be paid out of pocket. Is uh, you can see the balance there is five hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. That's less than the seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars that the constituency approved, um, and which is a, about it's about twenty-two thousand dollars a year. I'll just, I call it out of pocket. It's what the it's what the uh, taxpayers <coughs> would pay. Um, I think it's about a penny toward twenty thousand, twenty-one thousand dollars. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's about a penny on the on the on the tax roll. So um, um, again, the uh, and what we're we're looking for the select board to 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 tell our bond council that revenues the, the the balance of revenues would come from the local options tax during the time today and when we we go to construction uh, the recreation uh, the committee is looking for other sources of revenue we are applying this fall for uh, five hundred thousand dollars from northern borders regional planning uh, commission um, we have a, a draft of that pre-application has been been sent out to staff uh, that will be submitted to Northern Borders uh, by the middle of this coming week. Um, we are applying to the Central Vermont Economic, Economic Development Corporation to list this project as a priority uh, uh, project for uh, uh, Washington County in 2025. If, if we get priority status, status on that, that often helps you um, in seeking grant funds that uh, you know a third party says that this is valuable to the economic development of central Vermont um, and um, so that's that's why that's why we're here tonight to, to discuss that with the select board um, and um, uh, try to answer any questions you have again um, uh, and let, I shared with you the, the Sun Common data that had the had the grant mount in it, and I have extra copies of that if you need it. Um, and then the 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 anticipated revenues from the from the, from the project. So Tom, I have to ask, how do we know how 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 what percent of accuracy is going to be assigned to that revenue? It, it's it's the it's the um, manufacturers working knowledge I guess Carla faith because I, I mean we're faith. hearing you know how we're hearing from someone in the town that's saying those are very there those projections are too high and so I just want to how do we bear how do we how do we assure they have ourselves? done they have they, <laughs> yeah. have they have done they have done other canopy projects not municipally owned so that so they're uh, privately, most of them are privately owned. Like Lawson's did a big. If you've been to Lawson's down there, they I have a, yeah, they have a big. Their parking lot is covered in, yeah. in this, and, and uh, so I don't know if if Sun Common knows uh, would have would be privy to what I mean. They're, I, they're generating. That, so my concerns are twofold. Because well, well, first of all, let's let's back up. Northern Borders. We applied. That's where we applied last year, right? And didn't get any money. We applied for the Scott Hill Loop. Oh, so where did we apply for salt? We applied for something for this, and we didn't get it, right? We, we it was a, it was a part of the. It was a, a, a Department of uh, General Services. It was a twenty-five thousand dollar. This wasn't built into the Northern Borders thing last time. No, no. Mm, I don't think so. I know it wasn't. <clears throat> okay, well, okay, well, forget about that. But my, so we're, we're looking, in my mind, and, and you know I'm supportive, but we're looking at two unknowns. One being the local options tax, because we have no idea how much money we're actually going to get, especially since we don't know how the zip code thing's going to work. And then secondly, we're kind of, I would like, I would just like to know a little bit more about the, the revenue piece. Like, how do we, can they... Can they comp give us a project, similar project that's been in operation for five years, and what's the revenue? Like, you know, something like that. Just, just because I feel like we're dealing with two unknowns here. I, I can ask, but the 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 problem maybe is that they won't give the information. They don't know. It's 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 a private entity that they built this for. The private entity right. no, is, is, is getting the, the revenue. But but I'm I know the people who own Boston, okay. so I, okay. I mean I, I may be able to do that. I mean because you know I'm very supportive, Tom. You know I'm supportive. <laughs> I just don't want to get us get us uh, get us into something that we suddenly don't have the money to. Well, I I I I, I think you're being overly cautious with the concern about the local options tax, right? That's you know uh, there's there's the numbers we we got. From that came from the the state they, we, tax bureau. That is right? true, but 
now with all this zip code stuff, I'm worried that we're not going to see I, that. I, for I, I just don't, I, I don't believe there's a lot of merit in the zip code <clears throat> thing. They're collecting the tax now. We have to, I, I think, we show them a list of Berlin that these, that it, if you're a taxpayer, it's a taxpayer number. If, you're, if that taxpayer number. I would number, hope so. I think that's, it, it, it would have to be. It, it just. It's, it we don't have a post office, so we don't have, we have Barry zip codes and Montpelier zip codes. And Northfield. And Northfield zip codes, which is <coughs> typically how they assign, how they address the option tax. So it's Based a, it's a concern that, I mean, I get that it should be fairly, it, it should be solvable, but I'm. Uh, so, for example, Barry had the local options tax before Berlin, and some businesses, for example, in Berlin have a Barry zip code. So they've been their local options tax that they receive has been going to Barry already, and uh, we don't have that address because we don't have a zip code, uh, a post office, I should say. My concern is more with the math itself. I mean, so. We have not seen one penny of the local options tax yet. No, it's not we even going to go into effect until January 1st. That is correct. So, to get a full year's worth of local options tax, we're now talking about April of 2026. Correct. Are we going to hold off construction for that long? Well, if we, don't, if we don't have financing, then the answer is yes. The, ideally, we don't want to, right? <clears throat> the next thing, so. Looks to me like we're short about five hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. If you that is if you assuming we don't get any of the grant funding. Yeah, and if you which take the the, the electric generation at face value. Right. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're estimating to get six hundred and forty thousand from the local options tax. So we're now. <coughs> looking to spend almost the entire amount of our local options tax on one project, which means we're not going to get any benefit from the local options tax for our roads and culverts and anything else for 2027. I think if we even consider using a local options tax for this, we're going to get written out. I don't town. think it would set it's well. It's not going to set well at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't even take it, I can't even take it to the citizens to even consider that. That, that's not what we proposed the local options tax for. That's not what it was voted on. Um, well, I think it was <clears throat> proposed to do capital projects. It, and, and I, I understand it's a capital project, but we're talking about roads, we're talking about culverts, we're talking about, you know, uh, a road that's going to be closed for three or four years. And because of the funding choice we made, you know, if we had the $600,000, we could have told Federal Highway to keep their money and we could have financed it ourselves and be a lot further along. To, to further push these, we've pushed, pushed back Pine Hill Drive for what, three years now, two years. You know, to tell yeah. Pine Hill Drive, well, it's going to be another year because we're going to build the ice rink instead. That's just not going to fly with our, with our constituents. But if you have a capital improvement project that generates revenue and in effect pays for itself over time, I, I don't know of any other capital project that the town could do that's going to pay for itself. And I think that is a very uh, compelling argument to the constituency. If, is, is, look, the, the, the voters voted $775,000. The voters are only going to have to pay $547,000. To me, I thought, to me, the, I, it, I, I, you know, that's a, you know, our, our, our whole budget is four and a half million dollars for the year. So now we're talking a half a million on top of that, which, you know, I think we're going to get, uh, they're not looking 25 down, years down the road. They're looking at tomorrow. They're on top of a 20% education tax rate, on top of their health insurance going up 20% next year, on top of this carbon tax or whatever the hell you want to call it, you know, which is going to increase fuel costs by how much? $500,000 is just a pipe dream. It's, I don't think it's just doable in this town. Can, can I just ask Tom, hmm. you, am, I, am I reading this wrong? It doesn't, you're saying it pays for itself with the bond. 
Right, because it says with the with the bond. Yes, because yeah. it's going to cost five hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars yeah. more. But, but the bond was seven hundred. No, no, I understand. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm yeah. understanding yeah. the math. Yeah. So the bond was seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. The balance number is what's coming out of the taxpayers. The, the taxpayers, okay. which is thirty percent less than what they approved. I mean, and that balance no, was five hundred forty-seven thousand. So, so, we need, so, we need, so we need $1.6 million. If we get a grant for 311000 that means we need $1.3 million. Yep. We've got the bond for 775000 yep. which still leaves us short 535000 And And how that's paid for is the revenue from the, uh, from the electric use. Except, right? except we've got to... Pay that five hundred thirty-five thousand dollars now, and that revenue is going to come in over twenty-five years. I'm not arguing that point. I'm, I'm, I'm arguing that five hundred thirty-five thousand. We're going to have to get appropriation for that, and you know, at a town meeting in our budget, I just don't think it's going to fly. Especially when, especially now when we're coming back and saying, well, that our that our project that we thought was one seven hundred seventy-five thousand is now one point three million. It just doesn't set well. That's that's not a good communication point to put out to our to our citizens. Tom, Tom when does the northern borders get decided? Uh, they'll decide in like December. So it'll be this year. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. monies then become available like uh, March or April. And how much are you going to ask them for? Half a million. If we get it, it'd be, it's going to be a lot better. I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. But for us to to move the the project forward, um, I, I, I'm advocating that the select board agree to to cover that. And and the, mm -hmm. I, the, I know the recreation committee is going to go talk to um, vendors in our town that can supply some of the products needed to build this and try to get. Um, Discounted uh, or grant grants from those vendors. It's not like we're going to sit with our with our uh, sitting on our hands. Ideally, uh, we would like this to to uh, not be the issue, right? And uh, and can understand the angst. But again, I I the if you if you believe the electric generation piece of it, that, you know that's that's that's. I'm, they're the professionals, that's what they told us, I get it, I get right? it. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I understand you know, that. Which, which so, I'm skeptical of that to begin with. And so the, uh, the out-of-pocket expense, at the end of the day, to the constituency is $547,000 when, they, when they've voted for $775,000. Yeah, the, the problem is, here again, the out of pocket is 25 years from now. We need cash now to build this, or cash next year to build this. Or the guarantee that the, 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 the cash is there, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't know no, how. We got, we got to, we got to write. The, you know, we've got to write these checks. We got to write some common a check. We got, we, so we got to have cash available. You, 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 <clears throat> you, you, you we're going to go to to the bond bank. We're gonna bond. We're gonna bond the project, right? With these two, these two numbers here, right? We're gonna, we're gonna bond the whole project, and, and when the project's built, the, the, the select board, with your guarantee, because of your guarantee, will be getting the revenues from, from the, from the cell electricity. That's paying, your piece of what you, what you put in, what you, you guaranteed, right? The bond but, bank but, at some, but at some point it doesn't become a guarantee. At some point we got we got to write a check. The, the, and the, the, the bond bank will finance this. We but, it, but it's we my understanding they will only finance the 775. They're, they're looking at that we don't have the no, authority no, for. No, no, no. The, he's saying they'll finance it if we guarantee it, it, that, if we say that the, the other money is going to come, come from, from the, the local, local options, options tax. tax. Mm -hmm. Which is still, A, very much an unknown. I mean, we got. What I feel are reasonable estimates on that, but 
you're not paying it out of your pocket. So, so as I understand it, so the, the money is just being put up as a guarantee. It's a collateral. It's not going to actually go to our, the, no. the revenue will no. go, will cover the actual, That's so the I'm, local options tax is not actually going to be spent here. It's just guaranteeing it, the bond. Correct. You're not coming up. But it's going to be spent not, over the next 25 years. Not, yeah. not if the revenue. Well, actually it's going to be spent all in one year when oh, we yeah. do this project. And then you pay that over time. You pay that back to the bond bank over time, like, like we did this a sewer line. We did a sewer line for, for, for forty years, right? So we're paying back that. We didn't. The the town of Berlin didn't write a, a you know a check for four million dollars. We borrowed the money from USDA, and then over time we're paying we're paying the mortgage on that over right. forty years. So, so this is we're paying the mortgage on this for twenty five years. What's helping pay for the mortgage is the generation and sale of electricity to the utilities, and the constituency will will pay on on a on an annual basis about twenty two thousand dollars, which they agreed to more than that when they voted seven hundred seventy five thousand dollars. So you're not writing that the select board's not writing a, a half a million dollar check. They're not doing any of that. You're just saying, we'll. The, the local options tax is here as, as um, that, uh, that can support this project. No, you guys. But, but what if we use that amount of the local options tax designated for the ice rink and we need to use it for another different road instead? Well, you have $600,000 every year, right? So. And that's going to go quick. I, I don't. Every, everybody's, everybody is got these visions of money coming in that we're going to have all this money we're going to be flushing money we're going to be able to spend it you know we're not going to, we're going to have so much we won't be able to spend it um, we have now you know we've put off paving roads we can bear you know we've got your loader paid for for this year that's over two hundred thousand dollars so that's a third of the local options tax right there for a loader but we're going to have to replace a truck almost every year we're going to have to replace a a squad car almost every year you know we've been relying a lot on the arpa funds for the past couple of those those funds are gone mm -hmm. so now this is coming back onto the taxpayer and that's not we're not even talking about you know doing any roads yet but we're not using that cash tour yeah you, you, you but, are, but you can't you can't borrow against something that you don't have. You can't double commit our local options tax. So we essentially would have to hold on to that for a, how long do we have, do we have to we can pay it down spend it down as the bond goes down? Spend what? Do we have to hold does the six hundred thousand no. dollars have to be sitting somewhere? No, it's 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 like when the the the, the the town bonded for the water. They they don't have four million dollars sitting in the bank, and they're they're dealing it out. No, but they have voter approval. And so do we. We have seven hundred seventy. Right, but we don't for the whole amount. So that's why we're using. That's the only reason we're using the option tax. Correct. Correct. So what do we have to do? What are what are the requirements for that? Does it have to sit somewhere? I don't believe so, Carla. It's the it's the it's it's the it's the ability the to the taxing ability of the of a local municipality to cover their debts. It's like any like any a other. good faith effort. Well, it's it's, it's not a good faith. Yeah. It's just you you as a as a municipality have at your at your ability to raise taxes, right? right. And so if if you needed to, if there was a shortfall, you you could in effect raise raise a tax to this, but. What the Recreation Committee is saying to you, you don't need to raise tax. You're going to be getting a revenue from the cell electricity that is, is, is uh, at the end of the day, the constituency out of pocket will be less than what they approved last year. And I see what you're saying there. I do. And at the same time, I understand where you're coming from, Tor. And our commitments, and the fact that we're not going to have the local options tax money until at least April of 2026, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
the Wait, constituency has approved 700 no. I'm, well, I mean, the full years. Well, I mean, full, full year. year. Yeah. We'll have. But again, Flo, you're not using that money to pay anything. I, I guess if I guess if the thing didn't generate any electricity, then then you would be then you then you would be responsible for it. Yeah. And Tom, do you want to interject? Do you want to add and I share? Think you have a couple questions actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is why does the bond bank want that guarantee? It's a bond council. It's what bond council. Is this typical? They didn't do it for the water. Th they. Uh, there was full approval by the constituency, right? We we went to four million dollars, and, and okay. how long does the um, the solar grant last? It's a one-off. It's a one-off. They pay they pay three hundred and eleven thousand dollars six months after it's constructed. Will that be available to us in three years? Two years? It'll, we'll have it in six months after construction. No, he's asking if we put it off. If it's put off, will it still be available? Oh, I know. I don't know. Is that what you're asking? If you put it, it is on? Is that a risk? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, Tom. Yeah. Well, the only thing I'd add is, um, is uh, one, I, I thank the select board for all the support that they've given and the town because they voted this. Tremendous. Um, and I. I really think that the project, if done successfully, will be iconic for Berlin. And it's, it's not often we can have an iconic, you know, amenity like that that's uh, supported by grants, supported by income from solar, you know. To, so it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting project and it's pretty, pretty exciting to think how it could all come together. now. If there's a if and there's almost pay for itself. That's that's yeah, I think it's really key well, key I'm to saying. this discussion. Yeah. Now the the glitch is the bond council says, Hey, your taxing authority isn't enough. I want more commitment for I don't know why. But anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. It it is what it is. Um, is there I just hope we can find some way through that to <coughs> keep this project rolling. And again, we're soliciting grants and we're soliciting vendors to to help support this, bring the cost down. Uh, but again, yeah, and I should add that um, I know I've done this on projects in town uh, several times before, and we've got some great businesses here and. A lot of expense, whether it's the stone or the drainage or the piping or the, you know, to go over and get Wayne Lamberton or someone to go with us and yeah. go over there and sit down in their offices and say, how can you support the town? You know, we've supported you, and and they've always been good. I mean, you just got to look at that granite thing that somebody did. And that's our plan. But that's what but, that's what the rec commission yeah, is. It's not going to not going to cover. It. No. It's not going to cover the whole thing, no. but I mean, I, as soon as we get the, the, the uh, I guess, t better numbers of just what the costs are and what the materials are and so forth, and we can start that process, I'm kind of anxious to begin that. Um, so, and that's, that's going to help. That, I'm sure the bond council doesn't care about that no. either. No. But um, so I just thought I'd mention but if if we get two hundred thousand dollars in in grant or through through local vendors and stuff, the 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 obligation from the select board goes down by that that amount of dollars. Again, the select board is not going to be writing any checks. They're not going to be doing anything. Hopefully, they're going to be cashing checks when you sell electricity. Well, we don't need to make a decision no. tonight. But this so was good I information. Think, I think it's good. Discussion. There's you. Yeah, plenty of opportunity here for the Planning Commission to look at. And, um, Do we set a date to where we could come, should come back? Well, what is the...
Well, what is the schedule on there? Do we sell the naming okay. rights to somebody? <laughs> yes, but you'll get not, not much for it. What, what was that for? Wait, don't I don't, don't know if I want to say this, no. but uh, I would call it the Tom Willard Memorial Ice Rink. <laughs> no. I think we're a little premature on that, aren't we? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. In fact, I'll never forgive Pat McDonald for putting my name out there. I'll never forgive her. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty smart. She knew for 20 some odd 30 years I'd be out there spraying if she did it. That's <laughs> so, so in so we're looking, we're looking at begins construction in March, right? Yeah, like I mean, April, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, in springtime, yeah, yeah. April or May. And we will, uh, we should have all of our permits in hand by the end of November. And, and what kind of time frame does the bond council and bond bank need to the bond bank, do their the bond bank processing? Is, is wonderful. I just talked to them. It's a two-hour application. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you could, we would be applying for March, and then I think their funds become available like June. Okay. And they, they said they, can, they could fund the entire project. And these are pretty close to the to the uh, uh, rates that we're, we're going to have. Um, again, I'd like to set a date certain because you guys are busy. Forget about stuff, and and well, we're trying to get this thing done. Don't and, let us forget. Well, <laughs> don't let us forget. I do think putting it on a future agenda is great, and uh, based on the dates that you just gave us, I'm sure Tour can look at that and. And find a I think, well, I think the big day. I think the big thing is going to be waiting on the northern borders mm -hmm. results. So well, that's going to be can just wait that long. No, I, we can't wait that long. So if you could just try to find some information on revenue. Yeah. If, yep. And then let tour know if that becomes available. I mean, can we say the first meeting next month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that is good. And just one more question. So this company's all good now? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. Okay, thank you. And Paul. Thank you. So if there's no other additions, we'll move on to the EV charging proposal at the Town Hall campus. <clears throat> I go for it. So uh, the uh, planning commission in the town, um, uh, probably about a year ago now, decided to um, join the state of Vermont's uh, program. I forget the name of the name of it now. Uh, to to site uh, electric vehicle charging stations throughout the state of, uh, throughout the state. Um, and so the, probably about four weeks ago now, the state came out, uh, the state went out and, and did an RFQ for vendors, and they selected about 10 different vendors that would be able to apply for grant monies, work with mun mun municipalities, and uh, site these charging stations. Um, and we've had two of those vendors contact us. Um, uh, the one that you've seen in your packet flow is the um, one that um, thought that, that they would be interested in citing uh, uh, electrical vehicle charging stations here. It would be two stations, each station has Two ports, so it would, it would be enough. <coughs> excuse me for, for four, charging units on on the campus. Um, uh, we were hoping that they could be here tonight, but they they had some obligations. So uh, uh, the um, the number that the town needs to worry about is at the bottom over here, net. Uh, net investment. 
So they would be looking for an out-of-pocket, um, here, Joe, a little bigger print. Oh, I, it's all the same thing. I can actually, this is clear. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so they would be looking for the, the, the flow would be looking for uh, Berlin to participate at $90,000. $90,000 is uh, uh, can be uh, uh, you could apply to the bond bank and the bond bank would fund that and that would be at that rate that lower rate I mentioned before uh, two, two something two point one two and two and an eighth I think yeah um, and so this is their performa we haven't had a chance to talk to them about it um, it much, but uh, they have how how their system works. They uh, they cite these. They get uh, seventy five percent of the project money through that through that state grant. The ninety thousand is twenty is the balance is the twenty five thousand coming from the town. The the town then would own these these charging stations. Um, and um, the you can see the they they project income on these stations. Uh, there it's in a big blue square, uh, uh, and they're, they're saying it throws off hundred in two thousand and thirty four hundred and hundred and thirty hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars. Less than a whole, one hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars a year in revenue to the town. Um, I haven't vetted these. I don't think Tours vetted these numbers at all. Um, uh, I, uh, what we'd probably be looking from from the board is their comfort level with participating at the ninety thousand dollars. If, if they're not, if the town's not inter, you know, interested in participating, then I think this, this project goes away. Um, um, but if, if the town is willing to participate, um, again, it's generating revenue, and, and that's from users of the system. Of users of the system. Um, so and, all they do is, they don't... They're, they're a, they're a, they just put them... Put these yeah, things they're, out there. They're a POS system, right? Uh, and so they, they flow. People, at, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what oh. they do. They operate the POS system. They 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 build the hardware. <laughs> Remember, they're getting a grant. For, right, right, right. No, I get for, it. For three quarters of it, and so. Um. And the service is on us because we own it. The service. Uh, if there's the any service, yeah, the maintenance. The maintenance, maintenance. It, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. maintenance and, and this would be located here. Yes. Yeah. I was it, just gonna. Well, it's so, funny that you said that. So then, uh, I'm just kind of wondering: Is this like a destination? Yes. Why don't we put them over <laughs> on the mall site? Do they have any over there? I they I think they applied for this program. I don't I don't uh, know what the town applied for. Why not? I mean, but our land kinda, over there. It's kind of interesting, you know these these two projects that we just one we got done talking about this one here. We were questioning on, on if we're going to have a presence here down the road. Is, is it still up in the air if, if the town's going to have a presence here down the road? You mean this campus? This yeah. campus. We're PD. building this. Well, I know. We, we're, we'll, have ice rink, yeah. we'll have that. We'll have that. And it was kind of discussed that, you know, that project everybody w was, was good with, with the idea that it feels very safe. We have PD in and out. Yeah. And they've talked about moving PD somewhere. You may have a presence here, but what is that going to be five, ten years down the road? I don't know. Um, so anyway, now we're gonna, it's going to be a destination to charge our cars. Well, I think I some of that's sense. going to be you know the users of the ice rink that we they, hope can, they can plug in and yeah. charge yeah. while they're <coughs> skating or playing hockey or pickleball yeah. or, or yeah. Okay. basketball or whatever. Um, and, and what we have talked with Flo about because. You know, the, is it if, we, if if we if the, what could could we could the town get a discount off of their charging right is right if we guaranteed them two or four or eight charges a day and they and they said 
Yeah, we could do that. We could we could we could easily do that. It would give give the town a discount. What that would mean is that the town should be looking at changing their fleet vehicles to EV charging. Uh, uh, you look at you look at the, the cost of, of the fuel. It, it's it's about two thousand dollars a year savings between hydrocarbon and 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 the battery, and so. That's an easy. That's easy math. The 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 state of Vermont is giving twenty thousand uh, dollar per unit incentives to buy e EV vehicles. Uh, Tor and I met with Green Mountain Power. They run a, a good bit of these these uh, uh, EV from cars to trucks to uh, general equipment. They said they'd be glad to bring them up to the select board to a select board meeting so you guys could take a look at it. Staff could come, come take a look at it, you know, um, um, and so so I, I I think there's there's also a way for the town to maybe reduce some of their costs by of the of the of the fleet if if you went to EV chargers, but none of that's baked into this, and that's just the discussions that we've been having in, in house here. So I am completely. N unknowledgeable about this, so I take it. It's, I thought so. The chargers will charge any kind of car. They don't. It's not like your phone charger where you have to use an Apple phone charger for your Apple phone or your Android for your Android phone. Because does we have Tesla? Yeah, because the Tesla. I don't. Don't, the, Teslas don't take any. Don't match up. The te Tesla has. That's to what have, I thought. Right. Because there was an article the other day that Ford is now looking into utilizing. Tesla charging system, so they can use Tesla chargers because they're only either have to buy an adapter. But yeah, they're usually they're they're four, they're different. I mean, it's just like your phone. Yeah, but there are four different plug four charging units out here, so I don't know. Two could be Tesla and maybe uh, well, two. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think I don't, you, I don't think we can put in Tesla charging units. I think no, Tesla has to do that. I'm only asking because this shows all different kinds of vehicles on here, so I'm trying to figure out if how, how that works. We, Carla, we haven't been in the weeds. Okay, on it. just I'm asking. Just. just. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you guys take combat, but we we just recently bought a plug-in hybrid vehicle, and I think I'm not certain, but I think that the handle that connects, I think that's a pretty standard, with the exception of like Tesla proprietary whatever. Tesla okay. has their own thing. So if you have a Tesla car, you got to have a Tesla. But like for, I think, all the other vehicles out there, Chevy Volt, all the Toyotas, all the other hybrids, Hyundais, I'm pretty certain that plug-in is a standardized kind of receptacle for a vehicle. Well, interestingly enough, they put Tesla on here as the biggest block. That's what I was wondering. And I don't know what, it, what this was representing. I thought it was our business, the number of people. But anyway, just a question. But yeah, if we came over here and skated and our, and our car was a little low, we'd plug it in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's still like 20 minutes of charge, so um, a full charge. And so it's, and I think we could even, <coughs> the town can get even a greater discount on the, on the, if, if we would agree to charge between midnight and 6 a.m., well, I think these guys here could, you know, their cars are, most of their cars are sitting in can charges and it's 20 minutes of charge. I think there's some value <coughs> into in continuing the conversation with these folks, seeing what they can offer us, and I, and, and I think there's some value to the town uh, kicking the tires on no. EV uh, EVs themselves. And again, Green Mountain Power said they they bring up whatever size vehicle you guys want to look at, and you could take test drives of it and, and check it out. Did they, do you think, I mean, I'm, it sounds as though they chose towns that, or applications that they wanted to work with. Do you think the proximity to the interstate has anything to do with it? Or? It, it, it has to be. It has to be within a mile. A mile. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It has to be within a mile of it, so the interstate. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask one quick question? Is that all right? Yeah. So, do you know, are they level three chargers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's one, twos, and threes. Yeah. So we have, like, with our car, we got a level one, so you can plug it into a household. It just yeah. takes forever to charge yeah. it. But a level three, yeah. Yeah. there's two. There's, there's a level three, three plus. It's a yeah. Like, yeah, but the you can't level remember three will charge yeah. real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they said twenty minutes. Yeah. Good. 
Oh, I definitely think it's worth getting more information on. So I would try to invite them back to your next meeting? I'm fine with that. Mm. I would definitely like additional the, information. Their, I think the board would too. Because my understanding is they have to apply to the state by middle of next month. So they're they're gonna so what you guys you know, there's a there is an O and M baked in here and I am gonna have them talk about it. I just not what I do. And uh um and uh okay. it's and it's again it's the ninety thousand dollars. And if you believe the math, it'll pay for itself over, you know, 10 years. Wait, how much was the income? $140,000 a year. It only cost $90,000. I know, but it ramps up. Oh, you mean, <clears throat> what, what ramps up? The oh, we pay every year? The use of it. No, the use of this station will ramp up. It's more EV uh, cars and vehicles are, are on the road. Thank you, Tom. Okay, thanks. Any other questions anyone has of Tom before we move on? Okay. Again, thank you. Thank you, guys. And now we will move on to the NBRC oh, grant application you resolution. Um, <clears throat> so, as Tom mentioned, we are putting in, night, uh, putting in for a uh, grant from the Northern Borders uh, Commission. And, uh, you know, part of that process, we've done this before with every other grant. Um, we need to pass a resolution authorizing uh, the town to apply for the grant and sign any documents that come forth. So, I move that we adopt this resolution. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. So do you want us to sign this one to her, or do you have one right there? Okay, very good. <clears throat> I'll pass this over to you, Jill, for signing, and then Carla. And while we're doing that, we'll move on to the approval of the licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants approval. Do we have, uh, uh, there's the back of it. I think it's right there, Joe. Yeah, all yeah the way, you, want, yes. you want this yes, right please. now? Yes. Okay, Thank make you. the motion to pay warrant 25-04 <laughs> for, for payroll from August 11th, 2024 to August 24th, 2024, be paid on August 28th, 2024, in the amount of $63,877.39, to include payroll, uh, payable warrant 25G4, with check number 24215 through 24. 253 in the amount of two hundred and sixty nine thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars and forty nine cents Do I hear a second second all those in favor aye, aye. Motion aye. carries and now um, the approval of the minutes for seven oh, we'll what do about the, the tobacco oh, oh sorry. sorry 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 close <clears throat> no that's okay so um, the approval of the minutes, we'll do them individually, the first one being July 15th of 24. How did I miss the third set? I've got two sets. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the July 15th, 2024 minutes. A second. And I'm just going to add that there are some uh, grammatical changes and spellings and things like that, so I'm just going to turn that over to Tua so they can review those and make whatever changes are needed. So motion carried on that. And then the next minutes um, to vote, vote on it. Yeah. Oh, we actually voted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm you sorry. Vote. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. And motion carries. And the next minutes are the August 5th, 24.
to make the motion to accept the minutes from Monday, August 5th, 2024. As presented. Second. And again, there was just a few changes that I noted, and I'll pass those to tour. And um, we'll have a vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last minutes are the August. We don't have those. We don't oh, have we do not have those. Okay, no. so we will remove that. So the minutes for 8 19 24 are not being looked at tonight. And the next item is the tobacco license application for Smoke Buddies. So uh, normally the town clerk uh, handles all these uh, independently, but this is a new operation. Twelve. 84 U.S. 302, which I think is in the, I know, I remember I looked it up, I think it's there between the, uh, like the subway and the uh, chimney sweep and the pet store and that oh, same building. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it says 1284 U.S. Route 302, Suite 2. So, um... Oh, is it used to be... A, is the hair place gone now? Is that, that doesn't matter. Um, I was wondering if it was that or the, um... I know the Auto Dealers Association oh. has moved out, and I think the medical store has moved out. So they're seeking uh, a tobacco license and a tobacco substitute endorsement. Right. New business to our liquor, liquor tobacco listings. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it's in that location you were talking about near Subway. And did the chief have any issues with it? He did not. So I move to approve. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Now we'll move on to round table. Phil, any, any items? Um, yeah, just a, a couple. I know we, we've kind of talked about it in, in kind of offline, but we, we do have some vehicles, some town vehicles that aren't necessarily marked, you know, it's insignias or, or, or stating that it is a municipal vehicle, like the waterworks, like Tim's truck. Um, and, and I think that, that should be. Uh, that's important. I concur. I know it's been brought to me before, and um, I discussed it with, um, you know, prior town administrator. So I do. I agree. I think that that is very important. Um, another thing, I was out checking on uh, something very different, and it just so happens up on Chase Road, after that last July storm. I'm going to assume it was that storm. But a lot of our ditches filled in up there. On Chase Road? I, th I think up on Chase. There's actually, there were, there were a couple driveway culverts. I could give you the address, take a look at it. Um, and it was our material that filled those, drive, filled those ditches in. Um, like I said, I was up there looking at it, something very different. And I, I even have some pictures I can show you. Be curious. Um, so that's just something I just thought I'd bring up. Um, we we had a, another accident on Crosstown Road with um, in that notorious corner that used to suck a lot of vehicles in. We we have some washouts that are really edging in towards the road it's and being addressed. I've been waiting for it. I've had a piece of concrete that was poured. To, it's a culvert. The road's been pushed out wider than. The culvert, so it won't hold material over it. Yeah. But they left the road way before. Ah. Uh, yeah, I was there. I looked at the marks. They left okay. the road way before the, the culvert has left off, and she was going fast enough to go down into an eight foot ditch and then climb back out of a five mm -hmm. foot embankment into a driveway. She was clipping. And the last few have been the same thing. They they do not. It's twenty five miles an hour through there, and they is no way they abide by that law. Yeah. I have. <laughs> but we're losing <laughs> road, is what I'm saying. We don't have the ability to hold our road or shoulder up in that area. Um, 
I think I showed some of the pictures mm -hmm. to you. Um, I guess that's going to be a. We, we talked briefly about signage on Paint Turnpike North for the extended uh, closure. We don't have significant signage. And I think our signage just comes right up to the closure. And I think that we need some stuff that kind of leads up to that closure, mm. to those intersections. Um, did I not forward or sh uh, shared something with you as far as signage and appropriate signage for did a extended while ago. closures? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Carla? Well, can I, can I just ask Joe a question? Absolutely. So where, so where would, where do you think, do you think we should put them like over on, I'm just wondering how far out you would recommend. Something when you're coming up from Montpelier. Yeah, it, definitely. So you, you need to know that you're going to, your choice is Fisher Road or, or Stewart. Yeah. Before you get there. And Fisher too though, right? I mean, yeah, Fisher, do you think? Um, Maybe, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to think out loud. Like if I was coming up Benjamin Falls and I, you know, you might you even you think might want to take that that route yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just trying to think the road that. closure signs and the detour signs. It's it's yeah, it's kind of huge. Yeah. Anyway, just thinking that loud. And and, and this kind of goes back to I mean, we've been thinking about this, talking about it for a little while, but after an accident, we had somebody go through the signs. Yeah. And, and granted. Uh, there were other circumstances yeah. that led to that. How yeah. about that? Um, but it could very well turn into something not positive for the town. That would that'd be what I'd be afraid of. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. My brain's fried. I can't think of anything. <laughs> I do have something. So the supposed to everybody know the. German consulate, oh, consular general me. from uh, Berlin, from Boston, uh, visited us on Friday. Uh, we had a nice um, meeting with her, about 14 people who oh, were, nice. were in a presence. But uh, she provided us a gift, a piece of the Berlin Wall. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so <clears throat> nice. And then she also left us some uh, swag. Nice. Nice. Dig it. <laughs> no. <laughs> there are gummy bears in there, but they're not chocolate. So. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and she was very nice and very uh, explanatory. I wish I, I had some at work. Had I had a lot of leave. questions for us, and she was enthusiastic. And, uh, oh, that's nice. Tour and others brought her to the wayside. 106. Got her some maple cream pie. Ooh. Nice. In fact, yeah. uh, she took one back to the counselor. That's wonderful. A whole pie. <laughs> it was so nice she came here. I'm going to see if I can put this. Maybe we can put it in that case. That would be right wonderful. Yes, I think that would be wonderful. Definitely. It's beautiful. Yeah. I think maybe we should draft a letter thanking her for being here and uh, how much everyone appreciated meeting her, et cetera. Just out of curiosity, how many towns in New England are, how many Berlins are there? So she was visiting all of them. She referenced Berlin, New Hampshire, Berlin, Connecticut. Was Berlin, there Berlin Mass. Mass. There Berlin, Mass. Was there Berlin, Pennsylvania? Can't quite remember, but she I know is the in other the New three. England area. I don't right. know. It was the only New one England I don't know about area. is Rhode Island. So. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yep. Yep. I've never heard of Berlin, Maine. Is there a Berlin, Maine? Oh, I don't believe another so. One, yeah. I've never heard of one. Are we still in Round Table? Oh, yes, yeah. we are still in Round Table. Okay, so I was able to catch Tim doing some of the work on Row Hill with his, with his grinder. Awesome job. Love it. Came up through, uh, I mean, because I live on that road, that brush has not been cut back since my daughter got her driver's license, okay? Because I used to keep that cut back for all my kids. Um, but really opened it up, and I think it looks great. That's wonderful. Good. 
So just to add to that, I'm going to measure it just so we know how many footage, but my rough guess is probably close to six miles of road. Mm. Was well, done? Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. It's been very well receptive. Except to Hell Street, folks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Six miles, that's a lot. To the extent of what was done, yeah, that's an extreme lot. You know, you know that when we spoke at the meeting, it was a little over $12,000 a mile, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that, that was a lot cheaper. Yeah, you know what I mean? It only costs us 9500 a month to rent a machine. Yeah. A mile worth of road is 12, 12.5, 12 12.6-ish. 12 so we did probably close to six miles. Significant savings. Good. And it's, I mean, there's road signs out there that people haven't seen in a while, unless you like, drive by them and look. Mm -hmm. but it was, we had a lot of people come out to thank us. We've had a few people come to the office. Rachel sent emails to me for people coming to the office and thanking us. Mm -hmm. and, and the same fact with like what Joe was just saying. They have younger drivers, and now it's good visibility for pulling out of the driveways, driving down the road. I mean, you're not crowded to the center of the road from the brush mm -hmm. hanging out on the sides. I mean, this winter is going to be a tremendous for us. We're not getting mirrors. Yeah. yeah that will be very Good. helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if there's no other roundtable issues to discuss. So moved. Second. Here, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.